Why is VR Sim Racing such an incredible experience and what do you actually need to get started? In this VR Sim Racing guide, I'll answer both questions and so much more. I'm gonna cover why Sim Racing in VR is incredible, what hardware you need and what games you should try first. Let's go! So before I get into hardware and games, why would you even consider racing with a VR headset on? Well, while monitors, even ultra-wides or triples provide a great starting point, there's no depth to it and the sense of scale and distance somehow feels off. That's where introducing VR into the equation dramatically improves things. I'm not saying you can't have fun without it, but sim racing is all about immersion, and it honestly doesn't get any better than actually being in the driver's seat. Being able to check your mirrors by just turning your head and not by pushing a button, seeing the apex and knowing how much to break and when to start accelerating naturally. So the TLDR is that it dramatically increases immersion. The adrenaline you feel when driving at high speed in VR cannot be replicated in any other way outside of going to a real track and driving a real car. I've tried a lot of different accessories, and I mean a lot, but nothing even came close to playing a VR-enabled racing simulator with a proper force feedback wheel, pedals, and shifter. So let's see what you'd need in terms of hardware to get fully immersed while driving, and I'll cover both necessary and optional things. Links to everything I'll cover are in the description. Obviously, the first two things you'll need are a VR-ready PC and a PC VR-capable headset. Moving on to the actual wheel, I would highly recommend a force feedback one that reacts in real time to what your car is doing on track. There are three types of force feedback wheels available right now. The first type is a gear-driven wheel, and the most popular ones you've definitely heard of are Logitech's offerings like the G29, G920, etc. These are entry-level wheels, which means they're the cheapest out of the bunch at generally under $300. But it also means they come with drawbacks, like the lack of power and being very noisy. For me, the loudness disqualifies this category completely because 1. I plan on live streaming and don't want constant clunking sounds on stream, and two, I don't want to wake up wifey when I play late at night after she's gone to sleep. Happy wife, happy life. The next type of wheel is a belt-driven system, which as the name suggests uses a belt to transfer the force feedback from the motors to the actual wheel rim. This means it's dead silent and much smoother in operation than gear-driven wheels. Popular options of this type are Thrustmaster's offerings. At around $300 to $400, they offer great bang for buck and that's why I've personally gone with a T300 RS from Thrustmaster. For me, it's the perfect sweet spot in terms of price performance and I've been extremely happy with my choice so far. Being a bit higher end, you also have the benefit of interchangeable rims, like this Formula 1 slash GT1 that I have here, as well as many others to suit your preferred racing discipline. Now the third most expensive and most high end options are direct drive wheels. These use neither belts nor gears because the motors are connected directly to the wheel shaft. They can offer insanely high accuracy and raw power, but that comes with a hefty price tag. This category is pretty much dominated by Fanatec and Moza. More recently, Logitech also entered the direct drive ring with their G Pro. They all generally go well beyond $700 for an entry-level direct drive option, and up to a few thousand for the best of the best. To me, unless you're doing competitive sim racing or somehow earning a living from this, spending this much is complete overkill. That being said, if your wallet is overflowing, go for it. I've left a few links to some great choices in the description. While most of these come bundled with pedals too, something worth knowing is that there are two types of pedals, or rather, two types of brake pedals. Most cheaper wheels come with potentiometer-based pedals for the acceleration, brake, and clutch. While potentiometers are absolutely fine for the acceleration and clutch, for the brake these are not ideal. The reason being that they calculate braking force in-game based on pedal travel, or simply how much the pedal moves. The second option still generally uses potentiometers on the acceleration and clutch, but the brake uses a load cell, which as the name suggests is a tiny device that measures the force you apply onto the pedal. That's how many real car brakes work by the way. This allows you to have way more precise braking and develop muscle memory way quicker. Okay, so you have your wheels and pedals, but what else could you add to enhance the immersion even more? Well, while the large majority of wheels come with gear shifting paddles on the back, when you're racing these can be a bit fiddly and hard to reach depending on your wheel's position. That's where something like an H pattern or sequential shifter really comes in handy. After a ton of research into shifters that wouldn't completely destroy my wallet, I went with this Project D shifter from Banggood. I've been really enjoying the mechanical feel it has and it's held up wonderfully to my somewhat aggressive shifting habits. For the price, I truly think it's one of the best ones out there, but I'll leave a few higher end options down in the description as well to fit everyone's budget. If you're into drifting or rally games, a pretty essential piece of kit is a dedicated handbrake. 
Using a button for a handbrake is fine, but it's essentially an on-off switch. So you're either at zero or 100% force. With a dedicated one, not only do you have that finer control, but it's also always in the exact same place whereas a button will move with the wheel and may again be hard to reach. After a ton of research, I've gone with the AO logs options, which is built like a tank, and for me that was really important for something that you'll constantly be yanking on. Um, I meant the handbrake. A cheaper and very popular option are also what most sim racers call eBay handbrakes, which aren't as solid or reliable, but also cost less than half what I paid for mine. Finally, where do you actually put all these? I started as most sim racing enthusiasts do by clamping the wheel and shifter to my desk and keeping my pedals on the floor. I had to DIY this aluminum profile pedal tray to ensure they don't slide all over when pressing them. I also had to keep retightening the wheel on my desk since it constantly came loose after only a few races. This wasn't ideal so I decided to look for a better way. That's when I got this Track Racer TR80 cockpit. Again, there are way cheaper options like the offerings from PlaySeat, as well as insanely expensive options like full motion simulators that cost as much as my actual car. The TR80 offers rock solid stability, looks incredible, and being built from aluminum profile means it's super adjustable and easy to upgrade in the future. For the seat itself, I actually went to the junkyard to look for a real car seat. I've just arrived at the scrapyard, so let's see if we can find ourselves a nice chair. Okay, so we're on the hunt for, for an Nice seat, let's see what we can find. Uh, I found two Audi ones, which I kind of liked, but yeah, we'll see what else we can find. So this one seems like it might be uh, kind of nice. The, the driver one has the, uh, the airbag popped out, but maybe the, maybe the passenger one, we'll see. Track Racer and many other companies offer seats too, but the cheapest one is around $250 to $300. So I found an Audi A3 S-Line seat in pretty much mint condition for just $150. It has front to back sliders, up and down, as well as tilt and backrest adjustments. Of course, being a real car seat, the comfort is amazing too, so I can sit in it for hours and hours without my back hurting. Okay, okay, so you have your trace of hardware ready to go, but which sim racing games support VR and are worth your time? Well, I'll tell you what my favorite ones are, and if you want a full list, you can check out this older video of mine after you finish watching this one. First up, the king of racing simulator with VR support, Assetto Corsa. Not only are the physics and driving mechanics absolutely fabulous, but you can mod the shit out of it with new cars, tracks, sounds, driver models, you name it. It has both single player and multiplayer and just about a million combination of disciplines, tracks, weather and cars. 9 times out of 10 this is my go to when I want to do some driving and it goes on sale for just a few bucks very often. If you do get it, do yourself a favor and also get Content Manager, which makes it easy to install mods, customize options and join multiplayer lobbies as well as much much more. I've left a link to Content Manager below if you want to check it out. Next up on the list is Automobilista 2. This game looks superb and is extremely well polished. I haven't played a lot of it, although I might do that soon when live streaming. Since it's a much newer game than Acero Corsa, it's still constantly being updated by the official developers with new cars, tracks and general quality of life stuff. While you can drive formula style cars in both AC and AMS2, I've been really enjoying F122, despite its mixed reviews. The driving is extremely immersive and while the VR implementation could have been way better, I'm hoping they'll continue to improve it over time. In the meantime, I've still had lots of fun with it and even bought this F1 style wheel rim to use while playing this. The price for this game is a bit high in my opinion at 60 bucks, but if you're into Formula 1, then it might be worth it and I had to include it. Finally, if driving a rally car tickles your fancy, the consensus in the sim racing community is that Dirt Rally 2.0 is the go-to title here. It's extremely well made, looks and sounds awesome, and is also very challenging, but at the same time super satisfying to get the hang of. The VR implementation is great, but be warned that motion sickness is a real possibility here. So if you feel nausea, cold sweats, or a slight headache, please just stop. Drink some water and get some air for 15 to 20 minutes. In time you'll get over it, but you don't want to force your body more than it can handle. Again, links for everything I've mentioned are down in the description and leave a comment below if you have any questions and I'll answer as many of them as I can. Like this video if you've enjoyed it, share it with a buddy and hopefully I'll see you in one of the upcoming VR Sim Racing live streams here on YouTube. I'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers!